welcome boys and girls. Today we are live from, well, from an empty school. But we are using the school parking lot on this beautiful windy day to have a paper airplane throwing contest. Now, if you take a look, I have marked off this 18 foot long starting line. Now here's the problem. For any good airplane throwing contest, we need space. So right now we have three contestants and we have 18 feet of space. If each contestant was to get an equal amount of space on the starting line, how many feet of space should we mark off for each contestant? For today's airplane contest, there are three contestants, Jackson, Reagan, and myself. The starting line for our contest is 18 feet long. If we want to give each of the three contestants an equal amount of space on the starting line, how many feet of space should each person have? Pause the video to answer this question. Press play once you have an answer. We split the 18 feet up equally between our three contestants. Now Jackson will have six feet of space. Reagan will have six feet of space. And Miss Coker will have six feet of space for our paper airplane throwing contest. Here are the rules of the game. The first contest will be who can throw their green airplane the farthest. The second contest will be who can throw their pink airplane the farthest. And round three will be whose airplanes travel the total greatest distance for the all-time world championship. All right, let's go. Contestant number one is Jackson, and he will be throwing his airplane anytime he's ready. All right, Jackson, over to you. Oh, wow, that looks like a great first throw. Now over to Reagan. Go ahead. It is a windy day, and this wind is working against us right now. Go ahead, Reagan. Whoa, Reagan, I think it went the wrong way. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Here are the round one distances traveled. Now, originally, our plan was to measure the distance traveled using the units of either yards or feet. Once we saw just how closely the airplanes landed to each other, we realized we needed a more precise or accurate unit of measure. Therefore, we decided to measure in inches. Jackson's plane traveled 86 inches, Reagan's traveled 91 inches, and Miss Coker's plane traveled 54 inches. At this point, pause the video to determine our round one, first, second, and third place winners. Then, determine how much farther our first place winner traveled than our second place winner. When you have those answers, press play. Based on these measurements, it looks like Reagan right now is in first place, Jackson in second place, and Miss Coker in third place. And based on these measurements, Reagan's plane has traveled five inches farther than Jackson's. Let's go back to contestant number one. Wowie, wow, wow, look at that airplane fly. And now we're going over to contestant number two. Contestant number two, Reagan, go ahead. Wow, these pink airplanes surely are flying. Here are the round two distances traveled. Again, we are measuring in inches. This time, Jackson's plane traveled 116 inches. Reagan's plane traveled 108 inches. And poor Miss Coker, her plane only traveled 99 inches. Again, at this point in the video, pause to determine who our round two first place winner is, second place winner, and I think you know who the third place winner is at this point. For round three, we look at the total distance traveled between rounds one and two to determine the grand prize winner of the entire contest. At this point, pause the video to determine if Jackson's planes traveled the greatest total distance, Reagan's planes, or Miss Coker's planes. When you have the answer, press play. Based on these total distances, it looks like Jackson is our overall winner in first place, Reagan in second, and of course, Miss Coker came in third. When measuring a length or distance, we must first select the unit in which we are measuring. For example, here is a picture of my dream car, the Volkswagen bus. If I wanted to measure this vehicle to see if it would fit in my driveway, which unit might I use? Inches, feet, or yards? Pause the video to decide. When you've decided on a unit for measuring my dream car, press play. Remember, the larger the unit, the less precise or exact the measurement will be. Let's think about this. The Volkswagen bus is pretty long, so I think I'll start by measuring it in yards. One, two, three, four. Well, it's more than four yards, 
but less than five yards. Because we used such a big unit, we won't be able to get an exact or precise answer. If we switch to a smaller unit, like feet, it might be more precise. Let's see. Well, it looks like it's just about 14 feet. Here, measuring in feet was more precise than measuring in yards. Let's measure another object. This is one of the world's largest cockroaches. If we were to measure this cockroach, what unit would we use? Inches, feet, or yards? Pause the video and select a unit for measuring it. Once you've selected a unit, press play. Hmm, this is a pretty big cockroach. Let's see how many yards long it is. Well, yikes, that's not an appropriate unit. It's not even one yard long. Let's switch to feet. Uh-oh, it's not even a foot long either. Because this is a smallish object, we can't get a precise or exact measurement using yards or feet as our units. Let's switch to inches. Well, it looks like this is more than three inches long, but less than four inches long. If we were to measure to the nearest half inch, we could say the length of this cockroach is three and a half inches long. Today and every day, when you are measuring a length, height, or distance, you must first decide on a unit for measuring, for example, inches, feet, or yards. In order to make that decision, ask yourself about how large is this object or distance, and how precise do I need to be? If you would like to have your own paper plane flying competition, here is a great site that shows step-by-step -step directions for making several different types of paper planes. Enjoy your flight.